I really believe that when women are more empowered in their bodies, when they feel like they can trust their bodies, they feel healthy, they know how to take care of themselves, mm. and they're not living their lives based on their symptoms, mm. we can change the world. Besties, welcome back to another episode of I Missed Me. My name is Mafia Ansures. I am your host and I am so happy and so grateful that you're here. Today I have Hannah Ilbert with me. She is a certified holistic health coach and she is the founder of HAN, named one of 2023's most creative health and nutrition influencers, leading women to feel at home with their bodies by healing their gut at root cause level of and transforming their digestion. Hannah, welcome to I Miss Me. So excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to get in. We're going to have the most interesting conversation because like we were talking off camera, I'm not the best taking care of like my body. And I think that lately I've been just so addicted to like working that I like mm -hmm. forget about like taking care of my body. So I'm super excited for this conversation. But I want to start asking you how did your journey with holistic health start? Yeah, I had a lot of my own health issues and digestive issues for years. And I was really like eating healthy and exercising and trying to take care. And I was still dealing with all these chronic digestive issues. And that's like a lot of the clients that we see. They're making these adjustments and they're doing these things, but they're still mm -hmm. feeling off. They're exhausted. They're bloated. They're constipated. And that was really my story. I, the traditional methods and like Western medicine wasn't helping me. I was still struggling and I felt like something is just off, like something wrong. I'm too young. I eat too well. I exercise. Like I don't feel as good as I should feel. And that's really when I started like digging deeper into all things gut health and gut health, honestly, beyond just food and nutrition. Mm -hmm. But I kind of always had an interest in it, but my relationship with my body was also not the best. So like I started kind of controlling the way that my body looked through the food that I was eating, mm. caused a lot of stress, was very restrictive. And then that kind of like contributed to my digestive issues. So I always say like, I know my client because I am, <laughs> I was the client, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. am the client, but it was, it's been a road. It's been a journey. Mm. Yeah. What do you think are those misconceptions that you think that social media is pushing to people of like what's good and what's not? Because like we were talking before, I'm like, I'm someone that suffers a lot from anxiety and I yeah. consume a lot of caffeine. Yeah. But you just said that coffee is good. So, and I think that coffee affects my anxiety because of social media. So yeah. just like, what are those misconceptions? Like what's good and what's bad and that yeah. social media is pushing to people? So many misconceptions. <laughs> Once I got into how this all actually works, how your body really works, I very quickly realized that a lot that were like taught in like magazines and all of that is very wrong and, and very harmful, honestly. Um, cause I definitely like diet roller coaster most of my life, like counting out my almonds and weighing things and all yeah. of that. And it just led to so much stress and so much dysfunction and caused a lot of my gut and hormonal imbalances. So I think a lot of the like cleansing and detoxing and restriction and mm. all of that is it's not doing any of us any good, mm. especially women. Like our horm hormones are really responsive to feeling safe in our body. Mm. And then same goes for like anxiety and Um, digestion, and all of that, like making sure that we, we feel safe in our bodies is number one. We won't produce adequate hormones without it. We can't optimize digestion without it. And in order to feel safe, you've got to eat enough. You've got to rest enough. You've mm -hmm. got to really take care of yourself. So I like to focus on like nourishment over restriction, right? Yeah. Like what do we need to make sure we're adding in versus just giving you a big list of like yes and no foods. Mm -hmm. And then that's not even working. And then it stresses you out more, you know, because then you're trying to live on that and it's very restrictive. So, so many misconceptions, but to, like going back to caffeine, yeah, I think it's really, it really depends on where you're at in your life. So yeah. I love coffee. Like no one's gonna take it from me. <laughs> I love my coffee. I love my cold brew. Um, it brings me so much joy and I look forward to it every morning. With that being said, if you were in, a time of your life where you're like burnt out, where you're really anxious, where you're exhausted, it would be good to minimize caffeine, okay. right? And then as you strengthen, you can tolerate it a bit more. Mm. What do you think are like the primary factors behind like foot sensitivities? Food sensitivities, mm -hmm. gut dysfunction. <laughs> so when we're talking about food sensitivities, they're really the response or the result of underlying gut issues. So it's very common in the holistic and functional space to immediately start pulling out all of these foods that you're quote unquote sensitive to in order to heal your gut. That's not really how it, how it works. So food sensitivities and having all these reactions to these foods like gluten and dairy and different veggies and things like that, 
it's all the result of these deeper underlying gut issues. So things like gut dysbiosis and low stomach acid and leaky gut and things like that are causing the reactions to these foods in the first place. Hmm. So I like to speak out about that because once again, it can just, it can very easily turn into lots of restriction, taking all these foods, being terrified to eat these foods. And that's not good for anyone. It's not good for our mental health. And that's just as important as our physical health. It's all connected. So we want to avoid just stripping out lots of foods and focus on really repairing the gut at, at the core. So then you can tolerate more food. So just deeper gut issues are contributing. To that. For those who like have trouble understanding what the gut is or like the importance of yeah. the gut, how would you describe it? Yeah. So your gut, a lot of people talk about the gut and like the gut microbiome. Gut feeling, gut. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of trendy now, but it's for a good reason. <laughs> so it actually really matters. Yeah. Um, but your gut microbiome is really like the environment or ecosystem of microorganisms within your gut. And when, when we say gut, we mean like your intestinal organs. So usually people are talking about like your large intestine and small intestine, the stomach plays a role. And then I consider like liver and gallbladder also digestive organs. So it's really like the microbiome is the ecosystem of microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, archaea, parasites, all of these things naturally exist within us. Like Mm -hmm. we are made up of trillions of bacteria. So when things go wrong with those bacteria is when we'll get a lot of symptoms Mm -hmm. and the majority of our immune system is also inside of our gut. So that's why you'll hear things like 90% of all disease roots back to the health of the gut Mm -hmm. and then the gut brain connection. So it's like any health condition, we help people with chronic bloating and digestive issues, but also like chronic acne and rosacea and um, joint pain. And it goes so much farther because the gut is at the center of everything. What's H A N? Yeah. So Han is just Hannah Aylward. Yeah. Han. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I thought it was like H A N. Yeah. Um, and what is like the the purpose behind it? Behind the company overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, to like change women's lives. But I really believe that when women are more empowered in their bodies, when they feel like they can trust their bodies, they feel healthy, they know how to take care of themselves Mm -hmm. and they're not living their lives based on their symptoms, Mm -hmm. um, we can change the world, right? Mm -hmm. Like when a woman knows what feels good to her and she feels empowered and she feels confident, that's when we can show up and really like positively influence the world. Like Mm -hmm. I could have never started my company and we couldn't help hundreds of clients like around the world a year without my own health and me feeling yeah. confident and me feeling safe in my body and things like that. As you know, I mean, with anxiety or low self-confidence, like you can't, it's hard to show up, you yeah. know? So even though we focus on gut health and digestive issues, it's like my real mission is to like get women in their power. And so they really know who they are and right. they trust themselves. Makes them feel good. Yeah. I feel like bloating is also a big trendy thing on social media and it's a big taboo, I feel like. And a lot of people struggle with getting rid of it. Yeah. What would you say are like factors that people might not know behind bloating? Yeah. So there can be many underlying root causes of bloating, um, ranging from the food that you eat to like sluggish digestion to like internal gut microbial imbalances as well. So a lot of women are that we see specifically are already making the nutrition adjustments. So they're like eating quote unquote clean and they don't eat gluten and they don't eat dairy and they eat more veggies. And they're like, what's going on? I look six months pregnant with bloating. Mm -hmm. That's a big sign of like a deeper internal microbial imbalance issue or just like poor digestion. Mm -hmm. So before our food even makes its way into our gut, we have to hopefully digest it well, right? So things like low stomach acid can cause bloating, poor pancreatic enzyme secretion, sluggish bile flow. Um, A lot of people are struggling with like liver stagnation because we're inundated with toxins constantly. And then you add on like birth control and alcohol and medications. And it's like our bodies are just kind of overloaded. Mm -hmm. So bloating isn't one simple fix, really. It takes like investigation and seeing seeing what's going on underneath it. That's the work that we do. Like we Mm -hmm. I say we like look under the hood. We like look, dig deeper, look under the hood and assess what's really going on in the gut that's causing these symptoms Mm -hmm. because I can have bloating and you can have bloating and they could be from different causes. So that's really important. And for anyone out there who's like, this woman speaking to me, like I'm bloated and nothing has worked. Like Mm -hmm. you just haven't gotten the right help yet. We just haven't understood what's causing your bloating. Yeah. So if you've tried just like enzymes or like, you know, random like deep bloat pills or whatever, it's doesn't mean you're like broken. We just like haven't gone to the bottom yeah, yeah, yeah. yet. Yeah. For those who are listening and want to start like their holistic health journey, what would you say are like the steps? Oh my gosh. 
it's, it is good to start with nutrition, right? Yeah. Because we eat every single day. We have to eat to survive. Mm. And there's a lot of like exposure, right? So like hopefully we're eating three times a day. So by addressing your nutrition first, we can start to make a lot of adjustments. And all of these nutrients through, we are getting in all of these nutrients through our food to like fuel all these different reactions in our body, skin repair and muscle repair mm -hmm. and everything. So nutrition is the foundation and it's very important. So first you want to just like eliminate like ultra processed foods, like highly, highly palatable ultra processed foods, and then start adding in more whole foods. Most people know that already, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, okay, adjust the nutrition. But the other thing that I would really focus on is like your nervous system. So really deeply supporting your nervous system because mm -hmm. The women that we see are like, they're burnt out. Like they're, they're kind of beyond stressed, right? They're, yeah. They were really stressed, like high cortisol. And now they're like, I'm just exhausted at this point. Yeah. So we really need a lot of nervous system support and nervous system regulation because the gut and the brain are so connected that our nervous system, digestion is a nervous system regulated process. And you can't, you can't repair when you're in that fight or flight state or that pair or that sympathetic dominant. What state. are those like? biggest tips because I'm using them for me to yeah. like regulate my yeah. nerve, like your nervous system eating enough number one is eating enough and stabilizing your blood sugar so that's another like going back to nutrition but I, I like to think of stress and like put it in different kind of pockets so we've got like physical stressors we have mental and emotional stressors and we have environmental stressors so we can't always control the like mental and emotional stuff like yeah. we get stuck in traffic or you get stuck in the stairwell or yeah. whatever it is <laughs> Like those things can happen. We don't see them coming, yeah. but the physical stuff we really can change. So yeah. we can make sure that we're balancing our blood sugar. What that looks like is like having a good source of protein at every meal, fiber and healthy fat, um, avoiding carbs. Like I call them naked carbs. So carbs are not bad. Our body needs carbohydrates. So I'm not, we're not pushing low carb or anything mm -hmm. like that, especially women. They really need carbs, yeah. but we want to make sure that we're pairing it with a protein. Mm -hmm. So instead of having like a piece of toast with jam, it would be like a piece of toast with avocado and an egg, right? You're getting fat, you're getting fiber, you're getting protein. So mm -hmm. it's like a bit more balanced. But this is really important for anxiety levels in your nervous system because when your blood sugar drops low, you, you're going to get anxious because your body's going to kick out cortisol. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that feeling. It's like feeling hangry where you're like yeah. anxious, dizzy. You're like, I'm like nervous for no reason. Yeah. You're like, I'd eat anything in front of me because yeah. I'm just like going to pass out. Mm -hmm. We want to avoid that. Mm -hmm. That's very stressful, you know, and it, and it really revs up anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I always say my sister struggled with anxiety so, so badly. Yeah. And as soon as I helped her regulate her blood sugar, it was like night and day difference because mm -hmm. she wasn't having these really like low dips. And then the body's running on stress hormones, mm -hmm. kicking up anxiety. So that's like number one. The second thing would be like getting in enough minerals. So like sodium, potassium, and magnesium. We use a lot of these and we burn through a lot of them when we're stressed. Mm -hmm. So adding more of these things into the diet, like we have our clients do things um, called mineral cocktails where we like combine like sodium and potassium and vitamin C and magnesium. And this really helps replenish. So I like people to focus on, once again, replenishment and nourishment versus mm -hmm. taking things out. Mm -hmm. And then like other more so nervous system regulation tactics would be breath work, meditation, journaling, and honestly, just like turning off. That's what I was going to ask because I know that health is super important, but sometimes eating well and eating healthy is expensive. Yeah. Not a lot of people have like, you know, ability to afford the type of living that might be like healthy for you. So what are those things that you can start doing right now that yeah. don't require like yeah. financial, you know, support? Some of the best stuff is free. So like, yeah, prioritizing sleep. Mm -hmm non-negotiable, right? When we wake up after a bad night's sleep, we're more insulin resistant. Our anxiety will be higher. Our body didn't have time to repair. So like really prioritizing sleep is number one. Um, getting sunshine exposure first thing in the morning. So like stepping outside, getting the sunlight in your eyeballs. This is a great way to support hormonal balance and your sleep wake cycle, your circadian rhythm. Um, that's free, right? Yeah. So like drinking enough water, you know, it shouldn't cost us that much. A good filter is really important. Yeah. It is with our water quality, but like these things are, are awesome moving your body, you know, and it doesn't have to be these like Barry's boot camp or any of these like intense classes or expensive classes or anything like that. It's like, can you walk? Can you dance, dance in your kitchen, dance in your living room? Like <laughs> I do that every day. It's adorable. <laughs> I, love, so I love dancing. So like I start my day, I make my coffee, I put my music on and I'm like dancing around my kitchen uh -huh. to like set the tone for mm -hmm. the day, but just moving in a way that feels good to you. Mm -hmm. Cause the only way that you'll stay with it 
is if you like it. Yeah. You know, so don't push yourself to go to these classes that you hate or that you're miserable in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's, I mean, there's so much stuff on like YouTube these days. Yeah. Like you can do the stuff in your living room. Yeah. You know, it doesn't need to be that fancy. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are really like the the best things to start with. And then breath work and that you can, you can go to classes and you can be taught, but a very simple strategy is just to elongate your exhale. So mm-hmm. whenever you're feeling anxious or you're stuck in traffic or whatever it might be, can you take an inhale for like four and exhale for six? And you can elongate that however you want. If you're really stressed, you can go even shorter. If you're like, I can't even, I can't even take an inhale yeah. for, for four. Um, it could be inhale for two, exhale for three. But elongating that exhale allows your body to go we have enough air. We have enough oxygen. Mm-hmm. We can we can settle now. We're safe. Yeah. So that's the signaling that we want to get to the brain, um, which is like you can do that anywhere. I'll do it yeah. in the shower. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm like yeah. washing my hair, I'm getting ready for a meeting, whatever, and I'm like inhaling and exhaling. Yeah. So that's the best stuff. And that was kind of like my next question. And like you said, you dance in the morning in your kitchen. Like, what are those like habits or like mini routines that you personally started implementing in your life that like completely changed your life? So many. I think um, one of the biggest things was just like allowing myself to not be perfect, <laughs> really, which took work. That's but, super important. And I yeah. feel like, and I've mentioned this in multiple episodes, like when you try to be perfect and fail, now you have two things to worry about, mm. like not being perfect and then holding yourself accountable or like blaming yourself for yes. not being perfect. So that just creates another problem. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think women in general are really hard on themselves. Yeah. Like we really, we are. we're really good at a lot of stuff and we can hold a lot. We can do like 10 different things at once. So I think it's easy for us to kind of like run that way and really try to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And you're exactly right. It just causes more stress. So that took me a while to like actually allow right. myself to get there and realize that nothing was going to crumble. Nothing was going to fall. Like I can be imperfect and I'll still, I can still have my business and I can mm-hmm. still do my thing and people still love me, you yeah. know? So that took a little bit of work, but that's like number one. Dancing, it like keeps me alive. <laughs> like I love dancing. I always have music on. I love r and I'm like always moving, moving to mm-hmm. music. Um, daily sun exposure, I really prioritize. It makes a huge difference in my energy levels. Mm-hmm. The minerals, like I live, I live what we teach, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, all yeah, of yeah. that. Um, balancing blood sugar is essential. I can, I can feel it. If I don't, I'll feel anxious. I'll feel, I'll crash harder once yeah. I do eat. Like if you ever have the feeling of eating and then afterwards you're like exhausted, mm-hmm. it's probably because you were like running on stress hormones mm-hmm. and then you finally eat and your body's like, yeah. It. Um, so those things. And I think another big thing for me, like I used to really restrict food. I used to exercise a ton and I would put my body under a lot. Yeah. And I think now I'm just kind of like, if I can get out for 20 minutes, like that's great. Yeah. Whereas before it would have to be like an hour and it would have to be perfect. Yeah. Now I'm like, if I can just move for 20 minutes, like that's, that's enough. Like Mm. letting things just be enough. Yeah. Letting my efforts be enough. How do you make peace with that? Like not being perfect. Cause I know that there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast that are super hard on themselves and like struggle to make peace with like the fact of it's okay to not even me, like I'm like super hard on myself when I like don't get things done. And then I forget that like rest is also important. Mm -hmm. So how would you personally make peace with that? Oh my gosh. Therapy. (laughs) Looking at like, why do I feel the need to be perfect? Mm -hmm. What, what am I afraid of? Yeah. What am I afraid of happening if I don't do it perfectly? And then what was also really helpful for me was like, I have such incredible girlfriends. I have such incredible friends. I'm so grateful for, like I have such a strong community And I, in these moments of like crumble or like, I'm like sobbing and I'm like ugly crying and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm lost or whatever. Mm -hmm. They just held me. They didn't, they didn't leave me. Like they, they weren't like, oh wow, she's really a mess. You know, they, they, they didn't do that. And I think I needed some like exposure to that. Mm -hmm. Um, And to then witness the people around me and how much I loved them Mm -hmm. and they weren't perfect. They would make mistakes too. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, why would I, why would I hold myself to that standard when I don't hold other people other people too yeah Yeah. everyone has Mm -hmm. trouble sometimes you know do you eventually like get to the fear of like what was the fear behind yeah um it goes deep I mean it's like childhood stuff it's like stuff with my mom yeah 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 you know it's like deep stuff and like I've done a lot of therapy I love EMDR um so I'll do like trauma therapy EMDR with my therapist like fantastic if you want a good cry (laughs) you'll get it like I bet (laughs) yeah but just really touching on this childhood stuff like my relationship with my mom is funky and she wasn't around for years so it's like as a child I took on the belief like getting I'm yeah if I'm perfect maybe she'll finally pay attention and love me right Mm -hmm. which I know is intense but like it all stems from this really like deep deep stuff yeah and then you grow up and you're an adult and you're still living by these beliefs even when 
it wasn't even like as a child, like I'm not gonna be perfect. Of course. Yeah. There's, you wouldn't expect a child to be perfect. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just learning. They're like falling on their faces. They're like mm-hmm. spilling things and whatever, but you witness these things as a child and you go, okay, well, if this upsets my parent, then I need to make sure I never do that or whatever the story might be. Yeah. And then you grow up with those beliefs, you know? So yeah. it's so important to like dig into this stuff or you'll wake up. I say to my clients all the time, I'm like, what we don't want is you waking up at 60 and being like, who am I? Yeah. What is this life that I've been living? Like, mm. I don't like my job. I don't like my partner. I, I don't even know what I like. Yeah. You know, that's what we want to avoid. <laughs> yeah. That's so helpful. Like everything starts from like childhood and until you don't heal like the root of it, you're mm-hmm. going to keep repeating it. Yeah. And it's, it's same for health. Like we do root cause care, you know? So it's like, if you, so it's that, that theory reigns true throughout So it's like, even with gut issues, if you have bloating and you take out a food, it's not dealing with the issue, but there's still a deeper root cause issue, right? So that's the work that we want to do. And then sometimes with clients, because I I will take it there. I love coaching people Mm -hmm. like this. I'm like, okay, well, you're here because your gut, what are your gut issues from? Chronic stress, burning out, burning the candle at both ends, under eating for years. Let's look at that. Mm Because if you just go back into that, it's back back. and back and back. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, How can we really move back and identify these deeper beliefs that you have about yourself um, to really start to shift those so you can get better and and stay better and just like enjoy your life more? Mm -hmm. Because that's also important. You know, Mm -hmm. you don't want to live this life where you're like, like hating yourself. Yeah. That's awesome. So important. Yeah. Anna, thank you so much for this conversation. I want to close it out by asking you one last question that I ask everybody that hops on I Missed Me. What does healing mean to you? Yes. I was thinking about this. Um, I think it means understanding and identifying like where you're getting in your own way because it's not going to be perfect, but, and things will kind of evolve and they'll come back and you think you've moved through past, like past something that it comes back in another version. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's the ability to go, Oh, I'm actually, I'm actually doing this to myself. Like where am I getting in my own way of my yeah. own success or my joy or my happiness or whatever. And identifying that and being willing to shift that, like the self-awareness, yeah. I think. Because healing is forever. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. And where can people find you? Yeah. So on Instagram, we're very like active on Instagram. I'm at Hannah Elward HHC. We'll make sure you get that because my last name is like a, a doozy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm always doing, I do weekly Q&As with my audience. I do like free live trainings all the time. So I'm very involved with my community. Mm-hmm. So like, feel free, send me a message, say hi. Um, and then our website is just hannahilward.com. And, um, yeah, if you're interested, if anything's like resonating, like don't, don't be a stranger, reach out. We're happy Mm -hmm. to help. Amazing. And everything will be linked down below. Thank you so much again. Thank you guys so much for watching or for listening. Um, don't forget to follow the podcast on social media at I miss me podcast. Don't forget that I have a clothing brand known in project.co to get your hoodie. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Mafia and I will see you guys next week with love. Mafia.